it's Pride Month. Um, and this year it's an important one because it's the 50th anniversary of the first Pride in the United Kingdom. So that was 1972. And um, there's a lot of celebrations going on. Now, some of you know that I was um, the chair of Pride for uh, three years in the 1990s. So from actually from 94, 95, 96, those, those were my Pride events. Uh, and I was involved with uh, organising it for something like five years, six years. Um, and uh, last year, um, I found a copy of my speech from the beginning of the March in uh, 1994. So what I thought I'd do is um, I'll start uh, a little series of videos um, sort of rummaging through my, my collection of stuff that I've still got. Um, and I thought I'd start with, with that uh, video. So, because it's Pride Month and um, some of you may know that I was once the chair of Pride uh, in the 1990s, London Pride, London Lesbian and Gay, Bisexual and Transgender Pride. Um, and before the Pride March in uh, 1994, uh, we had um, a stage set up in Hyde Park as the march gathered. It was a sort of a celebrity stage. There was lots of famous people on it. So there was the likes of Barbara Windsor and Paul Gambaccini and uh, Maria Esposito was there, uh, Michael Cashman was there, um, and Hufty, do you remember Hufty? She was from The Word, and we also had quite a lot of others. Um, I found my speech, because I gave a speech that day, and it goes like this. People, are you ready? Are you ready to march? Because if you're not ready to march today, when will you be ready? 25 years ago, on the 28th of June, 1969, the night they buried Julie Garland, which I don't think is strictly true, the New York Police Department raided a gay bar called the Stonewall Inn in Christopher Street, New York, and got the shock of their lives when the Butch Dykes and the Drag Queens stood their ground and started a riot, which lasted for three nights. A year later, a march passed down the same street and heralded the beginning of lesbian and gay pride. On the 1st of July 1972, only a few hundred yards from where we are now, the first gay pride march in Britain passed nervously down Oxford Street. Today, there are 50,000 people in this park. You will march 2.5 miles each through central London, through Trafalgar Square, down Whitehall, past Downing Street and the Houses of Parliament. When you reach Westminster Abbey, that means that as a group, you will have walked the equivalent of four times round the equator of the earth. 1994, has been a remarkable year for us. Never before in this country have we felt so empowered as a community and so angry at our second class status. A new generation has grown up and redefined and revived what Stonewall means. With five years of the 20th century left, our time has come at last. This is our day, our year, and our decade. Our long march to freedom and equality has begun in earnest with the campaign for an equal age of consent, but there are other mountains to climb. We want partnership rights. We want the right to foster and adopt and parent our own children. We want the social and economic rights denied to lesbians. We want the right to own our own bodies and, have to, and to have consensual sex in whatever form we choose. We want to, an end to the victimless crimes of cottaging and cruising. We want proper provision and health care for people with HIV and AIDS. 
We want an end to the censorship of our voices. We want equal rights at work. We want freedom and equality, and we want it now. This March today, you will find all these issues are represented. If you want to make a statement under any of these headings, seek out the sections and march together. These sections are open to all and this march will be as political as you make it. But I tell you this, just by being here is making a statement. Your visibility, your dignity as you move through the streets of this capital will say more about your lifestyle than any organisation or individual politician or spokesperson or newspaper ever can. You are marching not only for yourselves, but also for all those who have marched before you and all those who will march after you. You are marching most of all for those who cannot or dare not be here today. So people, if you are ready, this is it. If Judy is up there, she's smiling at us and the sun is out and the sky is blue. And this may not be Kansas, but it's home. I stole that from Ian Lucas, I have to tell you. And as you march, remember the words to the old song. Climb every mountain, ford every stream, follow every rainbow till you find your dream. A bit of a strange switch at the end there from Garland to Rogers and Hammerstein. Um, when I gave this speech, I got a nickname. They started calling me Adam Evita Jeans because of the opening, people, people. Hope you enjoyed that.